Hello and welcome back to the uh, wonderful game of Hard West. This is our next episode and we're going into the third episode today, or the third, uh, third scenario. And I've noticed something incredibly cool. Uh, the third scenario called Law and Order actually lets us play the enemy of Solomon Delaire's, uh, Grand Inquisitor uh, um, Cervantes. Who is going to hunt our prior, um, our prior protagonist? We're always, as always, going to play it um, at the difficult or painful or whatever mode it is. Combat injuries and Iron Man, and here we go. The secret order was formed for the sole purpose of protecting the sanctuary from harm. Yet not a single member knew its precise location. Solomon created a cipher pinpointing the whereabouts of the sanctuary, took it apart, and hid a different piece within the flesh of each member. Thus, the meteor hidden in the sanctuary was protected from falling into the wrong hands. He sought this power and sent the Grand Inquisitor to find it, no matter what the cost. Brutal and efficient, the corrupt Inquisitor swore to slaughter anyone who stood in his way. The West would drown in blood. Ooh. I like it. With the bad guys this time. Okay. Grand Inquisitor Cervantes and his trusted lieutenant, Joaquin Perez, saw the armed guards and knew this was no simple farm. This clearly was the location of Solomon Delir's stronghold. So we're again in the setup phase, which means we have ample time to get things right. We need to obviously loot something up here with the main building and find Solomon the lair so I would say let's spread out and start searching then as for our characters we only have two this time which is hopefully we're not seeing too many enemies we're getting a nice uh, custom-made revolver um, a pretty bad shotgun Another custom made revolver and a standard western rifle. And it seems that we're having ricochet as well. Let's take a look where our ricochet uh, objects None here. There's one. There's one. So probably the sniper might need to stand up here. Like this here looks like a ricochet and this here looks like a ricochet, okay. There's another door up here. And another door a here. A could be heard coming from this shed. Most likely, it was Solomon and his guards lying in wait, hoping oh, to catch the intruders right. by surprise. It was then that the Inquisitor saw the curious wires leading into the barn. Okay, curious wires leading into the barn. This here seems to be something that we can abuse. Okay. And there is a female up here. She seems to have a lot of luck left, so probably around 100. Need to be a bit careful with that. 
Let's check the barn. The guards grew suspicious of the two strangers. Okay, so much and for checking warning, the barn. They opened fire. I probably should have checked that room here first. All right, she has a lot of um, a lot of uh, luck. Let's start by taking her out. Oh, and we got company in here as well. Well, let's put ourselves into cover first. There seems to be some sort of a device. I, I assume that will begin to lighten up that electricity, but I don't know what exactly it's going to do. This guy has eight hit points. That's going to be a tough, uh, tough cookie. But we can flank him, like over here. And that's one shot to get him down. We had a couple of enemies standing down here. Might as well check what they are doing. So she's currently hiding. We were to ricochet. Oh, that wouldn't work. Unfortunately, there are no other ricochet item uh, item store to ricochet off. It's a bit of a misdesign. Yeah, she's in full cover. We're probably not going to get her. There's another dude like standing right outside there. So I am thinking we move to here. We might be able to get the guy outside. What? He was just moving into the open? Okay. I mean, I take it. There you go. One more down. Alright, we moved into the open. This guy should be dead. Let's see what the lever is doing. The power unleashed from those charged coils electrocuted everyone in the shed. The blast from that burst of energy blew the doors wide open. Getting into full cover. We can see that there's one guy back here. I'm wondering, why isn't that working? Maybe we need to go to here. There we go. Well, that's 47%, uh, 74%. Let's try it. There we go. One more guy down. We're getting low on ammunition. Similarly here. So let's just reload. Okay, is he standing in the open? Seriously? Delir was dead. His demise seemed almost too easy. Yeah, I was about to say, like... We... Wait, the boss just came out? That was our character from the last uh, mission? Oh my god, I hope that it, that hasn't been Solomon. I mean, it's one thing if he dies in a really, really kick-ass uh, gunfight. It's a completely different story if he just dies like a no-name character. That would suck. So we're giving each other... Um, 
We're giving each other crossfire here. Apparently no one seems to be moving up. Uh, that's quite handy for us. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's check the stairs. Ooh, okay. So there seems to be no one down there. We have six, six hit points and enough luck. So even if someone would shoot us uh, straight, we would probably survive it. But there, wait a second, there's, uh, there is someone down there. No, 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 we're not going to take any risks here. We can just move through here and position ourselves there. Okay, obviously we're kind of in the crossfire there. She has a pretty decent position on us. Next turn uh, we can start harassing these guys. For now I just hear some reloading and someone's poking around in the first floor, but that's okay. There we go. So the person was here, even if the person would move to here. These stones would be in the way if we're moving up to here. Half cover is not perfect, but it's certainly better than standing in the open. So this here is five points of damage. Let's see if we can kill him. There we go. Alright, we have a very nice crossfire now. Three enemies remaining. We could go up to here because this wall is covering us. You know the there's one person like down here. Moving again to the window. We're seeing no one. Someone's moving down here. We're opening the door. And there we go. That's a very wait a second. We even have two time uh, we even have two time units, so we can play that safe. Oh wow. She had a lot of luck. I'll give her that. Let's do the optional objective. Left the safe open. Though nearly empty, Cervantes took what was left. Every little bit would help to finance his noble cause. Gotcha. So I'm thinking uh, we that would here uh, that uh, here could be a one on one. 
And we can just keep her nailed to the tree for now. We know it's only two of them left. Um, and we definitely know that these two are here. Let me correct that. We know there is one left. I think that person stands right next to the tree. Oh my god, 70% and he's still standing. I think he can't one-shot us. No, he can't. That's three damage. And he's almost down. Dante's approached Delir's body. One look at his face. And the Inquisitor knew he'd been hoodwinked. The dead man was a decoy. Ah, uh, there we go. Imposter. Look at that, guys. He was a decoy. He spat on the corpse and left in a furious huff. Solomon Delera had done well to acquire members and contain its powers, but what the devil wants, the devil gets. Cervantes was enraged. He did not like being bamboozled. For that, Solomon would pay. Let's see, when they reached the fellow agent Betham Rom, who was absorbed in what looked like dark rituals, still Perez trusted the Inquisitor would not tolerate the men's company. Were there any doubts of his godliness? Uh, the aggregated uh, Inquisitor told Rom that Delaire had not been here. Rom said, this was troubling, but suggested they hunt smaller fish until more cipher pieces were available. The layer's time would come. Rom had some rudimentary information as to the identities of the whereabouts of the cipher bearing order members. These are the guys um, uh, that have all of the cipher uh, parts um, sought into them. They could be eliminated by brute force or simply by slaughtering the local populace, but doing so would have dev devastating consequences. Rom was confident he could pinpoint the culprits quite accurately through yet be, uh, the correct ingredients for his rituals. He left the decision to the servitors. Rom knew of three members who carried the other pieces. The one at the ducks. Rom said he would have a clearer vision if he gained two bottles of liquor, okay. Rom knew someone at the trapper's camp, but he couldn't pinpoint him. He would cl have clearer visions with five dried meats, okay. Two bottles of rum and five dried meat. Rom could tell the order members lived on the farm to the north, but the vision was clear enough to identify the exact person if he had a rabbit foot. Okay, two rum. Five meat and a rabbit foot. All right. It was one of the larger farms in the area and the important food sources for the region. Somewhere, uh, somewhere among the men and women working in the fields was a member of the order. Uh, no, we 
don't let the devil sort it out because I think we need parts first. I don't really know how that works. Thanks to the nearby harbor, Regport, while not large, it was a bustling town. Strong law enforcement kept the town safe. And the market offered a good variety of wares. So here we do have bottles of liquor and dried meat. All right. Why right, this two? Let's find the rabbit food real quick. The harbor. The harbor had a huge economic impact on the region. Ships laden with goods and passengers arrived every day. Before continuing their journey on land, those who stuck around for the town tended uh, mainly to be traders, caravans, sailors, and prostitutes. It would be a melting pot if scum could melt. And somewhere amongst them was a member of the order. Um, okay, we're leaving that for now. Um, that's another merchant. Oh, nice. Healing elixirs. We might want to uh, get them. And mandrake powder is also very good. The trapper's camp. In the woods they found a group of mountain men. The formidable hunters, tenors, contributed to most of the leather goods in the area. Slaughtering them would have economic consequences. So, thing here is... If the Inquisitor wants to take over the area, he needs to at least live, let some guys live. And look at that, here's a rabbit foot. So... He kind of sees that. And therefore... We're going with the... Altar, uh, with the route of the rituals. We're giving them the bottles of liquor. Raum took a few sips and uh, then poured most of the fist bottled into the cauldron. He put a second, a second bottle away for later. Then he proclaimed that the man needed to die, uh, die was Leslo, the dock worker's foreman. Okay. We give him the dried meat. Raum took the first four pieces of the meat, chewed on each of them before spitting it into the cauldron. He swallowed the last one. After a few moments, the stew began to bubble intensively. Rom nodded silently. The man you were looking for is William Tanner. All right, let's give him the rabbit foot. Rom shredded the rabbit foot into pieces and threw them into the cauldron. Then uh, he could see the man clearly. It was Mike Mudgett, one of the farmhands at the farm in the north. Okay, so let me understand that. If we're now going here... Oh! It gives us another option, right? Using the information that they had, they only killed the Order member. With a powerful voice, uh, Cervantes proclaimed what sinner was in their midst, who would soon bring doom to them all. When he told it was Laszlo, the man was immediately chained and brought forth. Cervantes looked at him with disdain, then made a dramatic gesture. Uh, the wretch was torn apart by the crowd. None of them noticed the cipher piece would pop out of his body, allowing Cervantes to quietly pocket it and take it and leave. Clever. Um, let's use the information here. Cervantes introduced himself as a man of God on a mission to utmost importance. He told the foreman that Mike Mudgett was part of an unholy call, a cult and that for the sake of all of the souls he must be purged. Shocked by the revelation, the foreman uh, plunked Mudgett from the fields, then bound and impaled him. To the cheers of the farmers, uh, Cervantes then put fire onto the man's body. When the people disappeared and much it was a pile of human-shaped ash, Cervantes discreetly grabbed the reveling piece, uh, cipher piece. Oh my god, like, he is definitely a, a very, very brutal. Um, using the information to kill only an order member. The order that Raum identified was dead. It was time for the Inquisitor to meet up with him again. All right, Cervantes confident, uh, co uh, uh, confided in the men that William Temer had been seen in this area and that he was involved in the Black Arts. 
If they had experienced any bad luck lately, it was undoubtedly his fell presence that caused that the men delivered swift justice, roasting Tanner with kicks and carrying him to the main camp area, nailing him to a tree. Cervantes told them he must now remove uh, the source of evil and cut the cipher piece from Tamer's abdomen using a ceremonial dagger, telling the men he had uh, saved countless lives through their selfless action that day. It's an interesting uh, thing because apparently he can just point to someone and say this guy is a her heretic and everyone goes apeshit. The collector of cipher pieces weren't close enough to assemble the device. Rom looked at the bonfire blankly when suddenly shivered and grabbed his head in pain. Uh, he had a vision, Delea was at the church to the north. Rom said uh, if Cervantes brought him two doses of opium, his vision would be clearer, granting a strategic Rome's advantage. vision directed the Inquisitor towards the house of worship. All right. Let's, the there's the next the uh, shootout. Let's check what um, else we do. Uh, what else we have? This house uh, belongs to Ryan Harmon, a well-known doctor. Get the reputation for treating anyone as long as they renumerate his expenses and effort. He even ventured out to treat the natives in uh, while they needed more than a shaman could provide. Okay. Let's look at the fate trader. Does he have opium? No. But he has very, very nice relics. Look at that. Plus two damage. Uh, yes, please. And six movement boots and plus one damage. Um, okay. Oh, that's a bargain. I would do that any day. And here is the revolving revolver, one of the inventions that we produced in our last um, in our last scenario. Interesting. Okay, so here we have a gunsmith. Um, let's take a look, shall we? Sniper rifle looks interesting. We do have plus two on the doomsday watch, so I'm wondering uh, what weapon we could use. Um, either something with fanning or two shots per turn. This here looks great. Two shots per turn, but only four ammunition. This here, oh, that's two shots per turn and six ammunition. Okay, perfect, that's great. And let's take a look what he had a medium weapon with adjudicator and a short weapon. The shotgun is shit, so we're probably taking the 12 GA Defender, which is way better than this piece of garbage shotgun. Okay. I think that should be it for now. Okay. So we got everyone equipped, but we're still looking for opium. And I also would like to buy gadgets. Uh, here we go, by the way. That's, there's the opium. Um, no, the noise bomb was not so good. The nail bomb deals damage. That might be interesting. Let's try one of the nail bombs. And so both of them have a healing potion, that's fine. Our uh, Gabriel de Cervantes will be a melee character, he has weapon, uh, closer weapons and he has the lower aim. Um, Joaquim has 65 aim and low movement, he has way more movement plus low aim, so he's kind of the in your face guy while Joaquim is probably the uh, sniper. Both of them have plus one damage, which is wonderful. And let's take a look at the cards. Nice, we, we got the Joker right away. 
So we got plus one hit point. Uh, that's always good for um, a frontline character. Uh, there is the option for a street. Kill an enemy to get the chance of killing another enemy. Chain kill. Well, that's interesting. You know, I was thinking... I mean, chain kill is a good option. If we were to... Oh, we're locked with four cards. Never mind. Never mind. So let's use a pair here. The pair gives us plus four movement, which means his movement goes up to 25, and that's phenomenal. That's a very, very aggressive movement. Uh, he has plus eight side bonus, so that's okay as well. The skills, as far as I'm concerned, are okay-ish. Um, yeah, they are okay-ish. Not the best cards, but we can deal with it. So we got, we're missing some sort of, um, some sort of uh, luck regeneration for the sniper. Let's see if we can get something uh, that improves luck. Yeah, here restores luck over time. That's what we're talking about. And just a couple of healing potions as a spare. As a spare healing potion. Okay. I think we're we're good to go. Cervantes handed uh, Rome what he has asked for. After much grinding, uh, cooking and sniffing, Rome seemed satisfied with the uh, infestated stew. Uh, he sat with his face over the top of the pot, inhaling deeply, then sonorous voice declared he had been visited by a vision. A secret passage led to the shed behind the church. The order was not aware of it. Cervantes and Paris could use it to take them by surprise. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. And this is what we're going to do next time, ladies and gentlemen. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, if you like Hard West, leave a comment down below and please give it a thumbs up. We're seeing each other in the next um, in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you.